Well, for more on the referendum, we're joined by Padre Tobin of AIM2, who campaigned against both amendments. Thanks for coming in to speak to us on the 6-1 News this evening. AIM2, of course, was the only political party that was campaigning for a no-no. What was it, do you think, about your message that resonated with voters? Well, I think this is a great day for Irish democracy, to be honest. I think it's the people versus the political establishment and, and the people won. I think the country has dodged a bullet in terms of these referendums. It's very clear to me that it would have sowed enormous uh, confusion within the court system. We would have had hundreds, if not thousands of people traipsing through the courts at massive cost to themselves, trying to achieve their rights. And also there was a material reduction in the level of support that would be given to people uh, who are carers or who are in need of care. And I think there's a, the major message for me is that we have a political establishment that is not listening to the people. That, you know, it is, it is an incredible groupthink and herd mentality within uh, Leinster House at the moment. And that's a real problem for politics. And even the establishment uh, political parties, you know, <clears throat> we see that the, le the leadership of Sinn Féin and the Labour Party are marooned currently in a number of different issues away from their supporters. And that's a very uh, dangerous place to be. But what's to celebrate? Because nothing will have changed if these two amendments, which it looks like, are going to be rejected. So it means what was there before, which some people says were useless, they didn't stand up in court and they didn't offer protection to people. So what's to celebrate? Well, on the first basis there, the, the, um, the, the, fa the carers' uh, amendment would have actually changed the article within the Constitution that actually has provided a material benefit uh, to mothers within the home. So, you know, the Murphy case in, in, in 1980 prevented an income tax law which would have been damaging to families. Uh, the 1992 L versus L case uh, would have had, had a, a, a benefit in terms of maintenance and uh, alimony, uh, and that would have been damaged as well. And actually, there's a court case life, live at the moment where a mother of a person who has a severe disability is hanging her case on this particular article to achieve proper carers' allowance. Mm. The government, like so many other people, is fighting these individuals who are simply looking for help in terms of care. But it doesn't change the fact that day in, day out, mothers do go to work and nothing in this clause prevents them from having to do that because that's the society we well, live in. And that's the key point here. So in many ways, the government's amendments were a empty, hollow husk of virtue signalling. They were providing no major difference to people. Now what the government needs to do is actually provide the bread and butter supports that so many people want. And that's, that, that is the disconnect that exists between the political establishment and the people. The government is happy to talk about these very expensive referendums that actually provide nothing for anybody, but people actually want real supports in terms of more home help hours, in terms of you know, childcare facilities. But does the constitution need to change for that to happen? The, the will of the government is the key ingredient there. And I want to just, one other key point I think come out in, uh, coming out of today is important, in that in the run-up to this uh, referendum, we had the government and Minister Roger Gorman, when asked repeatedly in the dole and in the media, had he received any uh, firm uh, legal advice from the state that would uh, give the view that this wasn't going to create confusion in the courts and wouldn't lead to significant uh, litigation. Uh, he confirmed that. He says he has received no advice. But we've seen a leaking of the Attorney General's uh, advice, which actually states specifically that durable relationships would cause confusion in the courts and it would lead to litigation in the future. I don't think the confusion future. was the word. Well, it, it would say it, it, the court, there was no certainty how the courts would decide on what durable relationships meant. And that's exactly the point AIM2 was making. But the minister was misleading the people. And mis misleading the people before a referendum is a very serious issue. Well, there, issue. Was, uh, there was other misleading or mistruths you could say. Like, there were some no, no campaigners. There was a poster up that said, don't force mothers out to work, vote no. That was criticised by the Electoral Commission because they said that it was an incorrect representation of what this was all about. Yeah, but, like, that wasn't an AIM2 poster, I have to say that, so I can't, I can't speak but for But do it. you accept that there were some mistruths on by no campaigners? Well, I, I accept that the fact that the government created particular amendments that were so confusing that actually it was impossible for people to understand and actually led to a situation where all of these situations arose. But my, the key point here is the government have a responsibility in terms of misleading the people before the referendum. I personally think that the position of Roger Gorman is untenable at this moment in time and I think he needs to come out and answer questions of why he was given information by the most senior legal advisor to the government that he refuted he received and every time he was asked in the dole and in the media. What do you mean it's untenable? Do you think he should leave I, his I, position? I, absolutely. If, if, if the, a constitution is one of the most important things that happens within a democracy. Mm -hmm. And we had a minister who purposefully misled 
the Irish people in relation to the senior advice that he was getting. And I don't think his position is tenable. Can I just ask you, though, what would you say to families out there, single parents, quasi-families, as Michael McDougall called them earlier on, who after today still aren't recognised as a family unit? Well, I think it's really important that people, uh, single parent families and cohabitating uh, families, don't see this as a no to them. This isn't. This is a no to government incompetency, is what it is. An actual fact, most of those families, when I meet them in my constituency, they actually want to get real bread and butter material help. They don't want the virtue signalling empty, meaningless uh, amendments that these governments are providing. In my own constituency, most parents are getting up at half six in the morning, they're commuting an hour and a half, they're dropping their kids off at a creche, they're working a nine hour day and they're doing it in reverse. They're saying to me that they're being forced by this government's policies in terms of rents and mortgages to actually uh, be on this economic treadmill when many of them would love to spend you know, the first year or two in, in their kids' lives at home helping them. But they can't because this government is happier to deal with this sort of, uh, of marketing rather than real provision of help to families.